Welcome back. Welcome back, everyone. So what I'm going to be doing now is starting P1. So this is my document here. I've got everything in the same document. So when the website is up and running, I will share all of this with everyone. But as for now, I'm just going to put it on YouTube and you guys can pause the video and read what you need to read. So P1 says, explain how computational thinking skills are applied in finding solutions that can be interpreted into software applications. This is from the assignment brief directly. Now, this part here is from the assignment brief as well, but from a slightly different section. So let me go to the assignment brief and show you guys what I mean. So hopefully your teachers would have given you guys the assignment briefs as well. If I go to my unit four folder, which is here, and I'm going to go to this one here. So this is the assignment brief you guys get. And I think most students scroll straight down and look at what P1 needs you to do, what P2 needs you to do. But what you should do is compare this section here, so the, um, the criteria itself, to what it says in task one. And task one is going to have a breakdown, more or less, or an explanation of what needs to be done for each section. So this, for example, that's P1. This is P2. I believe this is P3, uh, P4 would probably start here, I'm sorry, not P4, M1, then D1, and so on and so forth, right? I might have mi mixed it up just now, but you should definitely look at task one and see what needs to be done there. I've copied in everything that needs to be done. For example, this is the thing that needs to be done for P1, so I've copied it from that section. Explain what computational thinking is and analyze how programmers use it to solve problems, including how programmers identify and describe problems and how they communicate features and processes, how programmers recognize patterns, generalize and abstract information required, and how programmers represent problems or systems. Now, this is pretty, pretty good. This is probably the best one I've ever seen for any criteria because it tells you everything you need to do in here. Just a quick recap, what needs to be done again is we need to know what computational thinking is. This is what I think we need to do. We need, we need to then work out um, what the computational thinking skills are, so maybe have a list of them, and then maybe be able to explain what they are, and then what is software, and how do we apply computational thinking skills to solve software problems, and that just means to create software, that's all it means. So wherever you see to solve software problems, it doesn't actually mean to go in and fix a software, it means to create the software. The very first question I have on mine is, what is computational thinking? This must be a thing. So let me just quickly go back here, what I've done for each of these criteria um, is I've read it, I've understood what I think I need to do, and I've broken it down into smaller sections. So I've actually applied computational thinking skills to each of these things. So what is computational thinking? It's a method of breaking down a massive problem or a bigger problem into smaller subsets of problems, so it's easier to solve. So you need to go find a decent definition. You should Google it, use a book, but you must reference it. This is why I put reference it in red. You have to reference the information you find. Reason being, the information you find is not your own. You didn't wake up one day and simply have all the information you needed to do this unit or this course. You had to find the information somewhere, so you should always reference it. What is a software application? So what is a software application? Find a definition for what is software, what is a software application, whatever one you choose to use, right? And then you're going to give some examples of categories and maybe one or two examples from each category. Again, this is just like a mini introduction of what is to come. And the reason I've chosen to speak about what is computational thinking and what is software, that's what they've asked in here, because they've said, explain how computational thinking skills um, are applied. I don't know how things are applied if I don't know what the thing is. And the thing in this case is computational thinking. And then the skills would be obviously be computational thinking skills. And then I can figure out how they're applied in finding solutions that can be interpreted into software applications. This just means how do you use the previous thing we spoke about, which is computational thinking skills, to create software applications? How do they help in the creation of software applications? So let me come back down to this. So for example, um, after you have your definition and you referenced it, Category one, again, reference the categories as well. So if you speak about Office Suites, if you speak about LibreOffice or Microsoft Office, just reference it. Go to the Microsoft website, go to the Microsoft Office section, copy the link, reference it, and you're good to go. So category one, I've said, again, this is the categories of software applications. I've said there's admin software, and then there's stuff like web browsers as well. 
And in admin software, we have stuff like Office Suites and email applications. An example of an Office Suite is a LibreOffice, but we all know Microsoft Office as well. There's WPS Office, there's Google Docs. There's so many versions of Office available, but we know Microsoft Office and the other versions are free. So if anyone wants to use that for this, that's perfectly fine as well. Uh, we have email applications, we have Outlook, we have Gmail, we have iCloud Mail, whatever it's called. We have all these different applications and they're typically for specific purposes. Next category we have is web browsers. We have Google Chrome, we have Firefox. You don't have to use my categories or you don't have to use my application examples. So for example, you could do, let me do a category three. So let's say cat three entertainment. And for entertainment, we could, oh, spelt it wrong, of course I did. Uh, for entertainment, we could do almost anything. We could mention games, we could mention online videos, stuff like Netflix. We could mention the apps on our phones as well. That's perfectly fine. So you don't have to use my categories. Whatever categories you want to use, that's perfectly fine. And again, this is merely an introduction to what is to, for what is to come. Now, finally, well, almost finally, we speak about computational thinking skills. So what are the computational thinking skills? Be sure to reference each one. BBC Bite Size has a really good page or pages on each one of these things. So if you guys do want some nice quick references, BBC Bite Size is there. If you don't want to use BBC Bite Size, use anything you want, but you have to reference them individually. So decomposition. What is it and how is it useful in problem solving? Pattern recognition, same thing. What is it and how is it useful in problem solving? So I'm going to go through the first one. And then you guys can go ahead and research each of these and then explain how that specific one, so pattern recognition, pattern generalization, and partial representation, how are they useful in solving problems? So decomposition, just as the name states, when something decomposes, it typically breaks down, or we as humans, we say it rots, but it just breaks down into a different form. So decomposition is simply breaking down a bigger task into smaller tasks. You decompose a problem, you chop it up into smaller sections. That's, what, that's all it means. And how is this going to be useful in problem solving? You can go find information on this or you can interpret it yourself. I recommend for this section, you go find the information. The section that you're going to want to put your two pence, your opinion in on is going to be the very last section, which is going to be D1, I believe, where it asks you to evaluate, well, analyze and evaluate, so M1 and D1. But for P1, P2, and P3, you don't give your own opinion. You simply go find the information, read it, understand it, rewrite it, and obviously reference it as well, and explain why is decomposition or how is decomposition useful in problem solving. Well, I'm going to give my opinion now because I don't want to Google in front of you guys right now. So when you decompose a problem, imagine, okay, this is Microsoft Word I, I have open here, right? When Microsoft makes this software, they don't sit down at once and think, let's spend the next six months making Microsoft Word and nothing else. No, that's not what they do. They break the problem down and ask themselves, what are the features of Microsoft Word that they can implement a section at a time? For example, every single Microsoft program has this same banner thing at the top where it has file, home, insert, draw, design, layout, references, so on and so forth, right? Not every program has the same things, but they have the same banner at least. So they know one of the first things that they can work on is maybe the menu system, right? Because if I'm in PowerPoint, let me open PowerPoint quickly. If I'm in PowerPoint, let me open Excel as well. And let me just do blank worksheet. Let me make that big. Let me go to PowerPoint. Let me do blank. If I go to file, this is file in PowerPoint. If I go back to Excel, if I go to file in Excel, if I go to Word and I go to file, these are pretty much exactly the same windows. So when they decompose a problem, they break it down so that they can solve individual sections at a time. So that same menu section that they have for Word, which is this one here, they can have the same menu section for Excel. They can have the same menu section for PowerPoint. So that's how they might do it. They might start making the menu section first as a basic example. So that when it comes to making the other programs, they already have a decent menu system that they can just import into another program. And if they, for example, Microsoft Word has specific things in, uh, let me go back to, let's say, design. PowerPoint is going to have a slightly different design set of features, right? But it's going to be more or less the same thing. So that's what decomposition is, and that's how you use it to solve a problem. Go find the information on this. The next section I have is how are the above skills used to produce software applications? I've kind of explained that in here. So this is why I, I have this point here. It says these are kind of answered in the previous section. So down here, I've mentioned that how is decomposition applied? You don't really have to do this again. 
if you have a fully featured section here. So if this section here is descriptive enough, so you go and you find a good definition of decomposition, and you also go and find a good example of how it's actually used to solve a problem, then you don't need to come down here again and explain all the same stuff again. So I recommend making this section beefy enough, and that's your P1 finished. So just as a quick recap, for P1, we need to know what computational thinking is. We need to then know what the computational thinking skills are, what is software, and how do we apply computational thinking skills to solve software problems, so to create a software. Thank you.